This episode is presented to you by NFL Sunday Ticket, now on YouTube and YouTube TV. With NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV, you can watch your favorite teams out of market Sunday games, plus watch up to four games at once with multiview. Don't miss the race to the playoffs. NFL Sunday Ticket is now just $39 when bundled with YouTube TV, where you get even more football. Visit youtube.com slash Spotify offer to sign up now. Lowest price on YouTube TV with base plan. Rest of 2023 season. Terms and embargoes apply. No cancellations. This episode is brought to you by Google Pixel, the official fan phone of the NBA and WNBA. The new Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro are built different. How? Take the audio magic eraser tool that helps block out distracting crowd noise so your play-by-play commentary sounds crystal clear. The only phone engineered by Google brings out the audio you care about so your videos sound as crisp as they look. Learn more at googlestore.com forward slash pixel NBA. Audio magic eraser requires Google Photos app. May not work on all audio elements. Apple Gift Card is a practical gift that unlocks a world of entertainment and fun. You can send it via email or give a physical card to your loved ones. Your friends and family can spend it on their favorite Apple services, including Apple subscriptions. Apple Gift Card can be used to buy all things Apple. Products, accessories, apps, games, movies, TV shows, iCloud Plus, and more. Visit apple.com for details and to send Apple Gift Cards to your friends and family this holiday season. This episode is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear. It's snowing again, and that wind chill is killer. But you're not worried about that because you shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection. It's warmth perfected with tiny gold dots that reflect your body heat inside and protect you from the cold outside. No snow or chilly temps can stop you now. Go out anyway. Shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection now at Columbia.com slash infinity. at it again with the Shades of Blue soccer show. We have a quickie tonight, a quickie. We're recording late. Schedules didn't line up this week. We got in our, our, our Tuesday interview with Andre Fontes. Check that out if you haven't. But, uh, you know, we had to get together here. There's We got a game coming up, some news anou- dropped tonight. So I figured I sent out this invite to the whole Blue Testament squadron. Uh, it's I've got David and Robert here with us right now. We'll see if Thad might join, Chad might join, we'll see, I don't know, it'll be fun if they do. So we do have a lot to talk about tonight, we got a mic stat to get us going, but the news just dropped here a couple hours ago, or maybe even sooner than that, FC Dallas will be the opponent for Sporting Kansas City, May 10th, the fourth round of the US Open Cup. What a surprise. Oh, the U.S. Open Cup, such a fresh new thing every year, right? <laughs> FC Dallas again. And the next round will probably be the Houston Dynamo. <laughs> then Minnesota United. Yeah, every year, every year. <laughs> By the way, I didn't sign off on a quickie. Just want to. <laughs> <laughs> I snuck that in there. I'm trying to get all of you to approve that one, yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay, yeah, we don't need to discuss too much about the Open Cup. No one was very excited about that one, I guess. Hey, uh, it's a chance for a trophy. I mean, come on, right? Yeah, yeah. Four or We've three got to grasp at straws now. Maybe, maybe once we get past the, you know, maybe into the fifth round, we'll get excited about a potential trophy. Sounds good. So we've got a mic stat. David, why are you being so quiet? What are you looking up? Are you looking up stats? Are you gonna? Are you looking up something to provide value to this show? I'm looking for Botswana stats. <laughs> <laughs> it's more interesting than playing Dallas in the Open Cup again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, here, I'll start off with a mic stat. We've got a dun 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 mic stat. <laughs> so this was, uh, I saw this mentioned already. Vermees kind of uh, kind of hinted at this about uh, games. We haven't scored two games. There's two goals in one game this year, but Mike took that a step further. Sporting Kansas City has gone 11 straight games without scoring more than one goal. The team record is 12 set in 2008. We don't need more than one goal, right? Isn't that the thought? Well, if the defense is <laughs> the defense is going to play like this, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> which does bring defense us. Defense hasn't heard the memo. Hasn't gotten the memo, I guess. But well, no, and I guess that kind of does bring us to the next to the next point here. I wanted to talk about. Ali tweeted out a quote from Vermees about the defense not being up to par. 
I didn't quite have it pulled up. Here we go. I've got it if you want it. I got it right here. So, Allie, right. quote from Vermees. Allie Trost, at Allie Trost, our girl Allie. What's up, Allie? Quote, you don't, have a, you don't have to have a lot of talent to play as a defender. I don't mean that disrespectfully to, de- to defenders. To be good, you have to have a really strong, tough mentality, physical, physically and mentally. And right now, we're coming up short on both sides of that. That is from Peter Vermees talking about the defenders. We don't often see him throw players under the bus or, or talk critically publicly about his team, but this is just one of those seasons, one of those seasons at the moment. So we just talked to Andre Fontes this week, and I don't know. So I, let, let's, I guess I should back up. Who, is he, who, who do we think he's speaking to specifically here? Is he, is he generally talking about the whole back line? Or is there one or two players he's speaking to? Well, I think, first of all, this quote is one that can, in a couple of different ways, be taken out of context. Um, I think he's talking about everybody. And I think what he's talking about is 1v1 defending. You know, you've got to be tough physically. You've got to leverage your position, get your position on a player 1v1, on tackles, things like that, and use that and be tough you know, mentally through that. If you lose a battle, you've got to be ready mentally for the next one and, and, you know, think about, Hey, what do I need to be doing physically? So I think that's what he's talking about. But um, there were a number of times in that last match where I was like, yeah, it's kind of met against the boys right here. We got Mm -hmm. run over uh, physically a number of times. And it's like, Hey guys, we need, we do need to toughen up a little bit. So if that's what he's talking about, I think he is, you know, tough to argue as far as I'm concerned. David? Yeah, I mean, I think you don't have to be a physical freak to be a good defender, right? For every Ike Opara, there's a Matt Beasler who was an international with the U.S. national team based on his ability to read the field and, you know, play his positioning and know, you know, when to step and how to play with his back line. You don't have to be a, a dominant physical freak to be a great defender. Um, but you have to be smart and you have to be willing. Um, I think Vermees is maybe criticizing some of the lazy defending, um, some of the cheap fouls that we pick up. Uh, and not to call anybody out, but in the sixth minute of the game, we picked up a yellow card mm-hmm. on what shouldn't – it was lazy defending, you know. And it took one of our midfielders, the one who has the most bite, out of the game because he couldn't play that way, any, you know, for the remaining 84 minutes – Uh, because he picked up a cheap lazy yellow early on so you know i think it's a it's an effort thing mamadou falls a monster in the air everybody knows that so you have to know the scouting report and know to bump him so that you know he's not able to get a clean run in and get so high up in the air there's not a single there almost nobody in the league can out jump mamadou fall so or Kyrie can but he'll jump a minute and a half before Mamadou fall jumps. Yes. The missed time jumps for sure. (laughs) You have to, you it's, it's how engaged are you? How mentally aware are you of the situation and who you're playing against? And I think that's all probably what he was meaning by that. Um, And a couple guys came to mind. Yeah. I mean, case in point, Izzy's tackle on um, Carlos Vela late in the game. Mm -hmm. That's a slide tackle. That's not the kind of physicality we're talking about. We're talking about, you know, battling for the ball. And if Vela ends up on the ground because you're battling hard, great. But a slide tackle, in a sense, to me, is is often lazy defending and lazy tackling. Well, I'm glad you brought that play up with Issy because that's something I wanted to get to in this discussion. Vermees talked about changes, and he did make a change in that game. And uh, Veloder came on for Fontes instead of Issy. And that's where I wanted to talk about was Issy was showing in that tackle included maybe maybe a little more fight. Like I hated that play as well, and I'm not happy about it. It was a it was a bad tackle, didn't look good. But was Vermees is that what Vermees was picking up on? Like there was at least some some fight from Issy out of that? Because I me watching that game, I would have Issy was the one I would have replaced between the two of those center backs. And I'm just wondering if that's what you know, if that's kind of what Vermees is talking about here. So I was glad you brought that up. I'm hoping that's not what he's talking about, but that is the change that he made in that game. Well, I think Fontes had a role to play in giving up that third goal. Um, you know, that was that lazy turnover in the midfield. And uh, yeah, 
see Fuentes just kind of walked right between Remy and Fontes and I mean just kind of walked right into the middle of the box and scored a goal. Um it went through it went through Issy as well. I mean he walked legs. through everybody. Yeah. <laughs> that was like pretty shambolic. The other goals like you know, again, falls like a monster in the air. So he's going to win a header and he flicks it onto a guy who's in the right spot at the right time. Like, it sucks, but that it happens. And Trejuri Sharadi's goal, I mean, that. Say that name in, again. You glossed over that real quick. Did you say it right? Uh, I'm going to pull a fad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a one in a million goal, right? And it's amazing. And it's probably going to win goal of the year. And kudos to him. Like, I watched a couple times. It sucked that it was against us, but that was pretty cool. That goal is going to win goal of the year? Probably. Really? Is I mean, it produced good? an XG of zero. Oh. I mean, yeah, it was very impressive. I still look at that, and I think... I mean, okay, yeah, the goal itself was impressive, but Zussi should have touched the ball, done something to broken it up, to break it up before it even before he could even take a swing at it. But the yeah, goal that, for fans to be mad at is that third goal. Yes. Because that was just shambolic defending. But also, that guy's good, too. That guy, sure. I can't even think of his name yep. at the moment, but he's very good. Cifuentes. Cifuentes, yeah. So you've got to make uh, good players work a lot harder than that, though. <laughs> very true. Very true. But yeah, I mean, Doyle posted that video in his article about how we need a six. And I think it was Remy was just twisting and turning every direction instead of, you know, stopping the momentum that he had. So yeah, it's lazy defending as well. Yeah. And is he, I mean, Remy's not, I don't think that's where Remy belongs. Um, I do think Remy has actually played pretty decent on the realm of the rest of this team. And I'm not going to like point fingers at him. But yeah, I mean, with with Uri going down and not playing at all this year, it's very easy for the guy named Armchair Analyst to be like, "Uh, hey, they need a six <laughs> on this roster." <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it does. It obviously makes sense at this point. What about the other part of that quote that uh, Ali posted? The other part was. I think I read the whole tweet. David, which part of the quote are you referring to? <laughs> at, at front of the pod, Ali Trost. SKC manager Peter Vermees on not scoring more than one goal in any game yet. Oh, gotcha. Mm-hmm. One goal should be enough. Our mentality on defending and playing every role of ball is just not there, and it has to be better. And this uh, this set off Calder to Facebook. People are not happy, and he got a lot of flack for it. Um you know, and as a fan, a season ticket holder, like, I want to see goals. I want to see attractive soccer. I want to see us dominate the league. But I think that there's some context to his quote, which is that the team mentality needs to be that we're going to keep a clean sheet every game. I'm sure that he doesn't go out there and say, score one goal and we'll call it good. But if the, the mentality needs to be that we need to defend hard and defend well, and if you only score one goal a game, but your defense is – Playing for a clean sheet, that should be enough. Context. Get out of here with your context. No, sorry. But if you ask Vermees, I guarantee you he'd rather win 1-0 one, one than win 4-3. to three. Yeah, clearly those quotes go together. And, um, you know, his mentality from the beginning, and you could go back to 2013, even before that, our defense was one of the top ones in the league, and that was always a trademark. And that's just gone away since, what, 20... 19 2018 yeah that's a yeah man where where did it fade away i get did it fade away slowly i think i guess that's why we can't pinpoint it well i think that's kind of a thing though you know it sounds like the way he's talking it's a now thing but i think it's been a thing for a while and other people have brought that point out that we've had the same issues on defense for a number of years now yes that's your that's very true but it's also fair from Vermees's perspective to indicate that it's an issue oh, yeah. now because Oh sure, sure. You know, because they won the conference like <laughs> in recent years. So yeah. Like with with the set with those same issues that we're seeing. So yeah, there there is something there and it's it's glaring this year. So well, is next the, week's quote gonna be the offense needs to produce, <laughs> or has he already covered that? <laughs> right. He'll just go up the line. Next week will be about <laughs> <Yeah>. midfield. <laughs> And by the way, you know, we, we alluded to it, the hate on Vermees. I, I'm not going to do the Fire Vermees show. We're not there yet. I'm not going to entertain 
the, I'm not going to give a louder voice to the few people who are saying it online yet. Uh, we're not going to do the, the Fire Vermeese show. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't. Vermeese out? Yeah, no, no <laughs> we're, not, we're not doing Vermeese out. Maybe, maybe eventually we'll get there, but I'm not lending credence to that argument yet. Okay, do we have any final thoughts? Do we... What's something we missed from this LA game? It's old news now at this point, right? Do we need to revisit a an ugly loss? I think we need to get justice for Johnny. They credit it as an own goal. Mm, that's but right. Johnny deserves the credit. That was a great great run of the box. Um and you know, if Johnny's gonna be playing like that the rest of the season, at least some part of the offense will come around. Yeah, that's the whole thing. It's just it, it only needs to halfway work when Johnny runs into the box like that and people lose their minds. It just has to, halfway has to work. Okay, this weekend we have the Columbus crew this weekend. It's only it's in two days because we lollygag this week for this podcast. Uh, fun fact. Hey, we though, have lives, Cody. Come on, man. Fun fact, though, this meeting of the OG MLS teams, it has been almost three years since these teams have played. It's been 1,000. I lost it. I lost it. 1,035 days since these two teams have played. And the last time we played, uh, it was a one nothing victory on the heels of a Felipe Gutierrez match winner. Do you guys remember Felipe Gutierrez? Remember when we had a, a 10 or a, a midfielder, a solid midfielder like that? Man, those were the days. <laughs> Got it, Kinda, maybe. But, uh, hey, you know what? Columbus, their underlying numbers – don't look bad, even though they're on a bad streak right now. So a lot of people are saying, oh, these are two games. Sporting should be able to win and get back on track. Yeah, I don't know so much. And, of course, uh, they've got that guy named Zella Ray on who might have a say in things. Yeah, absolutely. I don't he's s- real good. He's very good. And I don't know that there are any games in MLS now where it's like you can just look at it and be like, ah, we can get back on track with those games. <laughs> Especially until Gotti comes back. I'm just going to – I'm – we're hinging a lot of hopes on Gotti Kinda coming back and fixing things. So I'm 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 waiting until that happens. I'm just gonna assume not much is gonna change until then. We Columbus did lose to Detroit FC earlier this week um in the US Open Cup. Saw that. Not great. But no, back to the Kinda thing. I mean, as people have pointed out, it changes the dynamic in the midfield. It solves one problem, which then moves other people to where they probably should be. So hopefully it does solve some issues. But hey, we're not there yet. So it will solve some issues, but they it's still something, you know, midfield is where I put my focus and he might solve that, but Voinovic or someone is gonna have to start scoring more goals. David just okay, touched so, on Johnny being able to get things rolling and him contributing, but and Daniel can contribute some as well. But man, someone in the middle of that field is going to have to score a goal every now and then. So, are you God's, saying Voinovic should be starting on Saturday at striker? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I he yeah. Of course, I am saying that. I only sigh just because it's. <laughs> We've spent so long defending Kyrie, and also that I'm not necessarily that excited about Voinovich either. Like he, yeah. he hasn't necessarily shown anything that makes me think he is going to be a big change. So I don't know. It's not good, you guys. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> Things aren't if, going well. If when Gotti comes back, are we even sure he's going to go back in the midfield? God, same false nine. False nine him. The false nine. <laughs> Well, if Voinovich doesn't prove himself in what hopefully is some good minutes in the next couple of games, then, yeah, that's probably the best option. Oof. Dark days in Sporting KC Nation here. It'll be all right. All right. Thad missed his opportunity to slide in here. Any final thoughts before we get out of here? David yeah, two Robert? wins in a row. We're four and six. How about that? How's that, Sam? <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Is it? Okay. All right. I like that. You made me feel better here at the end. Good job. A little bright spot at the end. David, don't even say anything. I feel like you're going to say something negative. Don't even say anything. Go Sparting! Woo!
Anything to shake this, but I'm in. My fun fun team's got me drinking.